Hey guys, it's Katie, and I love giving challenges to other Tasty producers. So I thought it would be really fun if we have three Tasty producers make breakfast, but at very different budgets. Because sometimes when you're cooking, like you got a lot of money, and other times your budget is really tight. So I'm very excited. Too excited? I'm gonna go drop off money at Matt, Nietzsche's, and Jasmine's house, and we're gonna see how they react. I have the envelope from Katie. I'm very nervous. She gave me this envelope here that has my name on it. I don't know how much is in here. It could be a lot, it could be very little. I'm a little scared that there's like a dollar in it because I've made Katie do some content stuff that was not fun. Oh, the prosciutto! Ah! I'm not super nervous. I'm kind of down for the challenge. I just really hope I don't get two dollars. <sighs> Oh, hell yes. Oh, I got 10 bucks, bro. Hell yeah. 100 bucks. No! <laughs> uh, uh, this is super exciting because I thought I was going to get a dollar. So, Katie, thank you for having mercy on me. I appreciate it. Ha, suck it, Jasmine. I just really hope I don't get two dollars. All right, and let's see these rules. You can use two pantries. Oh, sorry. I'm so nervous, I can't read. One, you can use two items from your pantry. You can use one item from your fridge. Three, salt, pepper, and olive oil are freebies. Honestly, these rules seem pretty fair to me. Let's see what I have already, and then we'll see what we can make. Let's do it. Currently going through my fridge. It looks like I have a lot of produce, and what's calling out to me um, are the strawberries. They remind me of this really great breakfast item from one of my favorite bakeries. Philly French toast. Let's so grab this bread and syrup. Perfect. Don't have to buy those things. I've got yogurt, hummus, cheese, eggs, eggs, eggs. So I think I got really lucky because I've got pretty much everything I need to make French toast. I've got bread, I've got syrup, and I've got eggs. But to kick it up a notch, I'm gonna make this a little bit fancier and use a tasty.co strawberry cheesecake French toast recipe. And so I don't have the things that I need to make for the strawberry cheesecake part. So let's go to the store and see if I can get all of that stuff under 10 bucks. Okay guys, I just got to the store. I need about seven things and I've got 10 bucks. So let's see what happens. Found some croissants, but they're $2.99. Uh. God, guys, this is my problem. Milk is so freaking expensive. But I got like a little small thing of milk because I know I don't need a lot. Just went to the store. I want to show you what I got. Nothing. I got nothing. I could afford nothing with this $2 budget to go to more stores now. I've gotten all of my smaller items, which comes out to about $52.76 so far, which means I have about 50 bucks for my bigger ticket items. Sacrificed a couple of things. We couldn't afford sugar, but I got confectioner sugar. All right, we are off to store number three. Oh, finally some stuff I can afford. Let's get out of here. I had $100 to spend. Sorry, Jasmine. Nothing, I got nothing. Let's go home and make some breakfast. I am back from the stores and I am ready to start making my breakfast. Let's start baking. All right, so to make these budget-friendly strawberry croissants, I'm gonna pop open my croissant dough, roll them up and start with the wide side. Once all those are done, I'm gonna pop those in the oven for about nine minutes at 375 and make my custard. I messed up. I realized that this custard or this vanilla pudding needs milk. And so I'm cheating. I have to use milk from my fridge and that's two items from my fridge. Maybe she'll let me get away with two fridge items and one pantry item. She's not gonna let me get away with that. Now I'm gonna take my washed strawberries and cut them into thin slices and get to assembling. I let the croissants cool and now I'm gonna use a serrated knife to cut my croissants. I transferred my custard to a piping bag and we're just gonna generously fill each croissant. Then we're gonna take those sliced strawberries and insert them into the croissants on top of the custard. I love the flavor of the fresh strawberries with the custard, it gets me every time. 
Finally, I'm gonna top them with some powdered sugar, which was my pantry item, and they're done. They look really great for what I had to work with. To be able to make eight strawberry croissants with $2.26 was a challenge, but I only need one for breakfast, so I think I'd call this a win. So let's give it a try. Cheers! Mmm. Mmm. Nothing can beat the ones from my favorite bakery, but these are really good, especially on a budget. Mmm. Mmm. All right, so we're making like strawberry cheesecake French toast. We couldn't afford sugar, but I got confectioner sugar. We are also skipping vanilla. You know, you can do without that flavor. For $10, yes, you absolutely can. I'm ready, I'm excited, let's get to cooking. All right guys, this is really sketchy without the vanilla and without the like regular sugar. Well, let's give it a taste, let's see. I'm okay, like it's actually kind of tastes like a you know, like cream cheese cake filling. I'm sure it'll taste even more once we get the strawberries in there. I'm just gonna move on, we're just gonna roll with it. We got $10, this is what you get for $10. I'm gonna go a little bit thick. Well, I guess I'm doing two sides, so I won't go that thick. That's how you put something on bread. Boom. Excellent. See, it looks pretty much like a cream cheese sandwich. All right, let's get this dunked. You want to add eggs, the cinnamon that we got from Ale Store and a little bit of milk that we got. That was probably a lot of cinnamon. I think I adjusted everything but the cinnamon, but I like cinnamon, so that is okay. Okay, so we might need another egg in here, but no big deal. We've got plenty still left over in the fridge. So I'm gonna add that, and then once our egg wash is done, we can dunk our sandwich in it. Or, I mean, does it? I feel like it counts as a sandwich. I'm gonna call it a sandwich. Oh yeah. That's so hefty. That's gonna be delicious. Now, let's get this baby on the stove. It's all on the wrist. All on the flick of the wrist. Looking not bad. This is a very quick cook. Boom. Nice golden brown. Coming out, that's gonna be delicious. Let's uh, top this thing with some strawberries. All right, so this confectioner sugar, this is where it came in handy. Here we go. I went for this over taste, but it actually tasted pretty fine inside of that. Some delicious syrup. Oh yeah, that is where it is at. Jasmine and Matt, suck it. Mm. Super great. I don't think we miss anything with the sugar. I was hoping that we wouldn't because everything here is already pretty sweet. You got the syrup, you got the natural sweetness of the strawberries. I think a $10, this was actually like not that difficult because a $10 breakfast is, you know, pretty much what people would spend for $10. The only thing I'm missing is like a coffee or like a mimosa or something like that. But other than that, great time. I am going to be making blueberry buttermilk pancakes, steak, bacon fat, fried potatoes, a lobster omelet with Gruyere and cheddar, and finally a Bloody Mary. So let's make some breakfast. So to get started, I'm adding my pantry freebie, the all-purpose flour, then sugar, salt, baking soda, and baking powder, and just whisking all of that until nice and combined. Now for the wet ingredients, I'm adding my buttermilk, melted butter, and only the yolks at this point. Beat that all together until nice and combined. I'm adding my wet ingredients to my dry and mixing it all together very gently. I don't want to overwork my batter at all. It's okay if there's some stray little clumps of flour here and there. And now for the remaining egg white, just mix that all together gently and set aside for 15 to 30 minutes. Now that the pancake batter is nice and rested, it's time to cook them up. I'm cooking these in a mixture of butter and bacon fat just to add more of that nice bacony flavor to everything. And I'm adding some of my blueberries to the top. And this will cook for just a few minutes until bubbles start to rise on the top of it and it's nice golden brown and give it a flip. I'm setting the finished pancakes aside on a plate and moving on to my steak quickly, going to generously coat in salt and pepper, making sure to go around all those sides, leaving it all touched. And I'm letting it rest for about 30 minutes just so the salt can kind of work its magic. Now just time for the potatoes. My intention was to buy duck fat so I could make duck fat potatoes. I could only find bacon fat, so that's what I'm using. Some chopped rosemary, a bit of garlic, and finally some black pepper. And I'm gonna cook this over medium heat for a couple minutes until my bacon fat starts bubbling and the garlic turns a nice golden brown. 
I've gone ahead and boiled my potatoes until they're nice and fork tender and then gave the pot a good shake so that the outside's got a nice shaggy appearance as you can see here. And to these, I am adding back my bacon fat, but I want to strain out all the bits of garlic and herb that are in there because they might burn when they're in the oven. They're already perfectly cooked. So hold on to these, don't throw them away. And then these potatoes are going to go into a 450 degree oven until they're nice and golden brown. In my trusty cast iron over medium high heat, I'm adding some butter, a little bit more bacon fat, and my steak. I just want this to cook for a few minutes, get a nice golden brown sear on one side. I have rosemary and I have garlic left over, so I'm gonna throw those in the pan as well and just baste with my buttery mixture. That's starting to brown really, really nicely. Give it a good flip, cook another few minutes on the other side, and then once it's ready, pull it off and let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now it's time for the lobster omelet. Again, I am cooking it in a mixture of butter and bacon fat, just going to cook it meat side down at first until it's cooked through, have a nice char. Then I'm going to flip, repeat with the underside and then flip onto the sides. Keep doing this until the lobster tail has completely cooked through. Then I'm going to remove the meat, chop it up and it'll be ready for my omelet. For the egg portion of this omelet, I'm also adding just a little bit of water and finally some salt. Beat it all together until nice and incorporated. And this is going to rest for about 10 minutes while the salt works its magic on the eggs. I'm melting some butter over medium, medium high heat. It should start to foam, brown a little on the bottom. Add the egg as the egg cooks, push it into nice curds, shaking it around, making sure every little bit is covered. Today I'm topping with a combination of cheddar, gruyere, now time for my lobster meat all around. Turn off my heat, cover and let sit for about a minute just so the residual heat continues to cook the omelet and melt all of my cheese. And using my spatula, I'm just going to gently fold this over. That's the perfect lobster gruyere cheddar omelet in my opinion. It's now time for my favorite of all the alcoholic breakfast drinks, the Bloody Mary. First thing to go in is my tomato juice, a good glug of Worcestershire sauce, a squeeze of lime, shake a celery salt, shake a garlic salt, and finally a nice pour of my vodka. Oh, and of course my black pepper. Give that all a good stir. To finish, I'm just gonna throw in my one piece of celery. Okay, so that took a while. It took a couple hours worth of work, but my breakfast is finally done. Everything went pretty smoothly. I think the red flags that I had were syrup. I didn't buy syrup, it wasn't in my budget. I couldn't take it from my pantry. So I just threw together a really simple syrup with sugar, water, my leftover blueberries. It's time for me to taste everything. What do I wanna start with first? I am going to start with the steak. Steak is really simple. Salt, pepper, get it nice and brown. Ooh, that's good. So this is my lobster gruyere cheddar omelet. It's good, I think the Gruyere works really, really well with the lobster. Let's give these potatoes a shot. And I am like shocked by how brown these are. The inside is perfectly fluffy. It's like biting into like a mashed potato bite. Then, outside is so crunchy. Like, I don't know if you can hear this. So let's try our blueberry pancakes. Making the simple syrup with blueberry really saved this at the end because if this didn't have any sweet, sugary, syrupy goodness on the top of it, it would not be as delicious as it is. And finally, the Bloody Mary. I don't love that. Overall, this was a super fun challenge. I feel like I had to kind of problem solve a little bit more at the grocery store to make my budget work. It also taught me that you don't need to spend the most money to make the best breakfast. This is good, but I would have been okay with just a fraction of what I have here. And you know what? That's fine. Some days you're able to splurge, some days you can't. Let us know which breakfast you like best in the comments below. And until next time, take care, friends. Oh, yes!